Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Motivation, the show where we dive headfirst into the most amazing minds. And not only does my guest have an amazing mind, but he's created and developed so many more amazing minds. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the founder and the CEO of Kway Institute SA, Mohammed Kota. Assalamu alaikum, Mohammed. How's it? Oh, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Great to be on your show, Mo. No, fantastic <laughs> to have you here. You know, I mean, our viewers probably looking, saying they know you from the match show that's been happening here on Hilal Correct. TV. Correct. Your energy is unbelievable, and it's so great to have you on motivation. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Jazakallah, great to be here. And you know what? We are family here at Hilal TV. No, fantastic, <laughs> Mohammed. I want to dive straight into this. The mind, it's such a powerful tool. Uh -huh. And how do you find it with the learners of today? How do you keep them motivated? Social media is so distracting to them. Correct. So many of these kids get involved in social media and one hour and two hours of their study time or the time where they can actually grow as individuals is right. gone. So how do you find it to keep all your students motivated? The main thing is you've got to level with the learner. You can't keep it at different levels. You can't keep yourself as the educator. You've got to... You gotta make something, you know, they always say in life, if you're gonna do something, make sure that it's fun. If you're not having fun, like the show, I mean, I'm having fun in the show. <laughs> if you're not having fun, don't do it. Right. And that's the same thing. So what we try and instill in our learners, the minute that the learners come to the center, we try and level with the learner. We're not your teacher, we're not your mentor, we're nobody. We are, we are to guide you and we're here to show you how it's done. And the main motivating factor to learners is to share a lot of personal experiences with the people. To tell them that you can, if you can show empathy and you can empathize with a learner, that's your first starting block. So the minute a learner or a person, whether he's having a, a trouble with learning or in life or social, the first thing is empathy. Right. To be able to walk in his shoes, to see it, get yourself and the learner or the, the other party on the same page. Once you're on the same page, now you start growing. Oh, that's a phenomenal way of looking at it. And you know, when you come down to the level of someone who's trying to learn, who's trying to grasp, but going through a difficult time, they see it from a completely different perspective as if I'm not being told what to do, but I'm being guided in a beautiful way through the dark, trying to find the light. 100%. And ultimately, it's not you know it all. Never ever show the other person that you know it all. I mean, learn from them. Tell them, open the floor to the other person, say, share your experiences, show me a better way, go home, research, come, let's have a challenge. So basically, there's that reward factor that, you know what, come up with a better strategy. I'll either pay you for your strategy, right. so paying is the best, nothing beats cash. <laughs> <laughs> pay a person for reward or tell them that I will use, I promise you, although I've been using my strategy for 20 years, but if you come up with a better strategy... I promise you, I'll adopt yours. Wow. Wow. You know, I run a youth program right. at my uh, fitness center. Right. Right? And uh, I was talking to one of the guys and he said something so brilliant that his grandfather actually told him. Right. He said, never too old to learn, never too young to teach. Ah, and it seems 100%. like you've adopted such, uh, so much of that strategy. It's a brilliant yeah. way. And I'm sure your learners resonate so much with it. Is there a success story from one of your learners that sticks out in your head that you can share with us? Sure. If, if, if he's watching, I don't even know whether I, uh, I'm going to say Samir. <laughs> and if I say Samir. <laughs> right. I, tell me about you know, Samir. Come, I tell you about Samir. So I'm talking now, the one that stood out in my 20 years, Alhamdulillah, we're cel we, we, we celebrating 20 years. Wow, and the, I'll give you 20 more, inshallah. Amin, thumma amin, thumma amin. It's a, it's a great achievement, Alhamdulillah, personal achievement, that where we started 20 years ago and where we are today. But Samir, let's get back to Samir. Over the 20 years, there was one learner. And they were at a school where they were constantly demotivated. The teacher was, you know, always gunning them down. They were the naughtiest boys in the school. Well, they, they were naughty boys. They right. were the naughty crew. Okay. All right. Anyway, his younger brother attended one of our workshops, and it was already Samir's June, uh, prelim exam time. And Samir came to our workshop and he was completely, he was sitting under a tree. He came to his brother's workshop to fetch him. Yeah. And he was sitting under a tree and just totally spaced out. He was, so I went to him, I told him, listen, what are you doing? He says, no, I'm at school. I'm writing matric. I said, you're in matric <laughs> and you're sitting here under a tree. Bro, what's going on? <laughs> he says, no, Mr. K, I got no hope. Man. Really, I got no hope. I said, all right, how about you do this? You get a crew together. You get about two or three of 
of you together. You move with me wherever. You attend all my workshops and you travel with me no matter where I go. On me. Okay. On me. Okay. You don't pay a cent. But you just give it a go. He says, he says, are you serious? Mr. I said, game on. He says, you mean you can fix me? It's prelim now. I'm writing exams in two and a half months time. I'm failing. I know nothing. I said, come, let's try it. Right. Give it a go. Nothing well, ventured. Nothing, nothing to lose. Nothing yeah. ventured, nothing gained. Right. He got a crew together. We went all our, uh, for all our workshops. He began loving it. We went on long journeys together. He came with me to Cape Town. We drove to Cape Town for the workshop. For him, it was more of a skit. Right. He had... <laughs> time of his life. Time he of had his a life. time of his life. Right. I'm going to camps. I'm, I'm chilling yeah. here. Mr. K got workshops. I'm sick. Right. He attended. He mastered everything. Results. End of the year results. The boy... Gets the newspaper. That time it was still in yes. the newspaper. I'm talking 2008. He comes to my house. He's shaking. He says, my results are in here. I said, did you check your results? He says, no, I didn't check my results. I said, he, he says, I, I want to check it with you. I said, okay, let's sit. And we do a countdown. We do five, four, three. And he opens up the results and he just bursts out crying. He just bursts out crying. Matric with exemption. He passed all his subjects. He was the first child in his entire family lineage that passed matric. Wow. Not wow. only did he pass matric, he got 70% for, matri uh, for, 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 for mathematics. Wow. And I said, subhanallah, he cried. Both of us just stared. We just looked at each other. We couldn't speak. We were both speechless. My family was sitting around, my wife, kids, everybody. Everybody just saw the tears roll. He says, I'm sorry, Mr. K. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting a bit emotional. I can hear your emotion I, in this, man. I'm wow. getting a bit emotional on the show. Wow, 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 man. This is, this is such a fantastic story. I know our viewers are resonating with the story. And I can see the passion inside of you. And this is what it means to be a mentor. This is what it means to be a teacher. And this is what it means to change someone's life. And may Allah reward you for the lives, not just Samir's life, but the lives that you have changed. He because you speak. can see... I can see this. He in couldn't you speak. Now. He left. He walked away. He just says, I'll phone you tonight. I can't speak. Wow. I said, go home. Today, he's a franchise owner of Capello. Wow. He's one of the top dogs. Wow, man. Samir, salam alaikum. <laughs> Samir, pasotam. <laughs> Samir, Samir, I, I hope you are watching this. Samir, I hope you are watching this because if you are watching this, this is what you mean to Muhammad. This is what you mean to him and this is what he means to you and all the viewers out there. This is what it means to have a mentor. This is what it means to have someone who can change your life. This is what it means to find someone who can guide you out of the dark and into the light. And that, Come on, is, that is such a that phenomenal is story. That's from Allah you know? today. He, the rest of his crew, that was Samir. Let's talk about the rest of his crew. Head of BMW South Africa today, those boys had no... They were bouncers at a club Wow! in Madrid. They were bouncers at a club. They all scored distinction. They worked out from the other child, uh, Bones. <laughs> He's now a top dog in a computer IT company. Um, they averaged his marks out. His marks showed 98 on his report. That means he should have got about 199 over the two, over the two papers. Oh, man. Oh. Alhamdulillah, the BMW South Africa... Head of Cape owns couple of Cape uh, the other one, couple of Capello stores and the one uh, in a top IT company. I think it's Dimension Data or something. I think uh, Bones is working for one of those. And do you so still these keep in contact yeah. with all of them? I'll phone them now on the show. Mr. <laughs> K, what's up? <laughs> what's up? What a great what's bond. And, and I think no, we've got is... a friendship now, 2008. That's what, 12, 14 years? Wow. 14 wow. years. And if I pick up the phone now and I say, listen here, I need help. I need this. I need a, I need a, I need a BMW. Mr. K. I'll give it to you at staff price. Come. Before we head off to the break in that, yeah. I want to know something. One line that will change a kid's life. One line that you gave Samir. One line that you gave his crew. One line that resonates with you that might have changed your life. What would that line be? And can you elaborate on it a little bit? <laughs> you ask me to give me to the deep end. You know, it, 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 it could be quite cliche. But you know what? Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. And why does that line resonate with you so much? Because when I was in uh, grade 11, I failed maths. And when I told myself, anybody can do it in grade 12, 
I finished a three hour paper in one and a half hours. I got 100% for paper one, 100% for paper two. And it's just a flick of a switch that you just need to believe in yourself that you know what? Nobody's special. You just got to put the effort. Be motivated. <laughs> Be motivated. That's the important part. Of course. No motivation, no life. Yes, yes. No motivation, definitely. no life. And you know what? Life is a learning experience. Life is ongoing learning, man. We learn till today. I'm 45 years old and I still learn every single day. And we take it from step to step, uh, from uh, strength to strength. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us all from strength to strength. No, that's, that, that, that's a brilliant line because in that line, you can give anybody hope. There's so much hope in such a short word that anybody can anybody do it. Can anybody do is it. capable of achieving greatness if they put the effort in and if they stop blocking themselves off and start finding that intrinsic motivation that tells them, listen, you are capable of doing that. I know the viewers are enjoying this. It got a bit emotional, but it's motivational as well. And it's been fantastic speaking to Mohammed Kota here, giving us inspiration from true life stories where people have realized that anybody can do it. We'll see you after the break where we discuss this further. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Before the break, we got into it and we said that anybody can do it. Now I want to talk to you, Mr. K, about something even more important than uh, the teacher. How important is a teacher's role in a child's life, considering the child spends 12 years of their life in school, into tuition, mm. six, seven, eight hours of school every single day. Mm. This child is being molded by the teachers that surround the child. I know I've had teachers that have molded me into the individual sure. I am today. And how important is it as a teacher to mold a child motivate a child, see the learning disabilities in the child. You know, it was Einstein who said, you cannot judge a fish's ability by its ability to climb, climb a tree. A tree. Put it in the ocean and it's going to and swim. So each child is different. Different, correct. How do you recognize that? And then again, as a teacher, how do you motivate that child? The teacher is the single most important person even before the parent. Wow. Because the child is going to spend more time connecting with the teacher than connecting with the parent at home. The parents are working in today's time, 21st century, both parents are working. The child spends most of their time at school. They come home, the father is tired, mother, by the time she finishes cooking, whatever, kids are on social media, homework, everything. If they get half an hour to 45 minutes or an hour, it's too much. So who's the person? Now, from the entire uh, consort of teachers, a child will try to associate with one, only one. You'll try and pick one from the entire lot. And the teacher needs to ask themselves, am I that one that that learner is associating with? I always look at it. People ask me, so what is the, what is the psychological success of your program? What, what psychology do you start off to keep your audience gripped for over 20 hours and still give 10 out of 10 for course evaluation? I said, it's very simple. A child is a sum card. A child is a sum card. Okay. That child needs to be activated. If that sum card, you can have the most expensive sum card sitting on the table. You don't take that sum card. You don't activate it on the right network. Zero downloading is taking place. Right. Now you ask yourself, what buttons are you going to press to activate that sum card? So that downloading starts taking place at 4G speed. It can happen. You think it can't happen. I'm telling you it can happen. I've seen it. I've witnessed it a million times. A child, a mother, a parent comes to us and says, my child is blank. Never understood anything in their whole life. Rebel, drugs, alcohol, whatever. Yes. Bring the child. Let's level with Parent, you set out. Right. What's up? Talk to us. You know you can do it. Like forget everything. I'm not even interested in everything. Let us say, what if I show you you can do it? Prove it. A child needs to see systematically that he can. Once he can, you leave him. All he does is he loads his own airtime and he, owns, <laughs> he starts downloading by himself. Show him how to do it. Right. Once he knows how to do it. He's away. And then if he decides, if he wants to change his mind from Samsung to Apple to Huawei, 
he has the you've given him the tool right for him to activate himself on any network as he chooses within a guided process wow so i know we have many teachers that watch the show right from a preschool level to a matric level to even uh lecturers Lect in university and that that watch the show as a teacher who's dealt with so many pupils try to activate that some card within what advice could you give these teachers to say, okay, I am struggling to get through to all of my students. How do I become that one teacher that changes the child's life? Smile, man. <laughs> That's all I ask teachers. A smile changes everything. Smile with the child. Don't go in there with this face and go, go in with this aggressive attitude with the child. Level with the child. Smile with him. Befriend the child. And you will see the success happening. And show genuine, I mean... Genuine concern, genuine empathy and empathy for that child, you will see systematically that child will improve. Wow. So just level with the child and put a smile on your face. A smile on your face is not, it's a command in our deen. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, always put a smile. It's sunnah to smile. If a child comes to you, don't turn your back to a child. That is a sunnah. If a teacher really wants to know how to be the perfect teacher, Go to the sunnah. There's a book called The Perfect Teacher. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Go and read what he did. How he turned his whole body. Oh. Oh, if, if a child came and tap, tap, uh, taps a, a, a teacher, don't brush a child off. Turn your whole body. What did Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? Give this full attention. Every person that was around Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam felt like they were the most important and most beloved in his life. Now if every child believes that they are the most important child in your life. You, you've won his heart. Wow. You've won his heart. And how did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teach? He taught drawing in the air. He tried explaining. He took a stick and he drew on the ground. He tried every humanly possible way to... He understood the psychology of the human being. Today, we get teachers, we get ulama, we get everybody. They believe still in the stick. Wow, 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 wow. Hitting him. Man, how are you going to win a person's heart? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never did that. At the time when um, alcohol came afterwards that it was banned, those that had it in their hands dropped it. Those that had it in their mouth spat it. Those that swallowed it vomited it out. At what level of psychology did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam... And he didn't tell them anything. He just said the command came that alcohol was banned. Wow. That is the best way to describe how you need to be a teacher. That is a phenomenal way, not only a teacher, as a parent as well, to be able to just give your child that full attention when they are speaking to you. Don't sit on your phone, don't go on a call, don't send an email, 100%. full eye contact, smile, I am here for you. I know you're going through a tough time, but we will get through this, whether you're a teacher, whether you are a parent. And simple gestures, your body language with a child, when the child is sitting and, and talking to you, Put your arm on his shoulder. That already shows compassion. It shows that there's an, there's an electricity going between you and the child. Wow. The child is feeling, I've never, my father hasn't put his hand on me. My mother has never hugged me in my life. Yeah, I have somebody that's putting their hand on my shoulder and say, hey, son, don't worry. I got you. Oh. I got you. You know, and, and just a message to the parents as well is if you warm the child up in the home, the child will become a warm child and be drawn 100%. to warm people outside of the home. You Absolutely. know, I was watching a YouTube video not too long ago, and I can't remember who it was, but he was speaking about when he sees his child, from when the child was small, he picked his child up. He picked his child up, he picked his child up, because he wanted the child to be on his level, see the world from, from his, his eyes. point of view. 100%. So he continued to pick the child up until it wasn't physically possible to pick the child up anymore, and then he picked the child up emotionally. And he continued to pick the child up emotionally to build this emotional self-confidence in the 100%. child. I think you've, you've raised a fantastic point there, which I think slipped when, when you asked me, what do you think is, a, is one of the most critical parts in motivating or to, to get a child to be on your side? Be on the same page. Oh, that's Be on the same page. Oh, man. Try and see it from the child's eyes. Don't see it from an adult's eyes. 
You will never ever be able to, uh, to, to, to make the connection with the child. See it from his eyes I pr- or his or her eyes. I promise uh, you, you will never, ever, ever look back. Fantastic piece of advice. And now I want to get into my final question, uh, which will leave amazing advice for the inshallah. viewers, hopefully. It's a hypothetical question. Right. It's a question that I ask all my guests at right. the end of the show. Many years from now, Allah give you a long Amen. life, inshallah. Many years from now, it's your last day on earth. You've had many of your workshops. Yeah. You've done interviews, you've done shows, right, you've right, had right, right. thousands of students coming through your door, inshallah, mm. many years from now. But for some reason, mm. on your final day, everything mm. has to be erased. Everything that the world knows about Muhammad Kota mm. and Kway Institute right. has to be erased. Right. But you can leave the world with three pieces of advice. What would your three pieces of advice be? Connection with Allah, number one. Don't ever waver on your connection with Allah. And the importance of that. <laughs> and... Do you want me to explain it or yeah, going to number small, two? Small oh, okay. there, no problem. <laughs> I, I don't mind you yeah, getting I don't into even... it. Why not? Without a connection with Allah, you're not going to understand what your purpose is in life. You won't be able to fulfill your purpose and you won't be able to mold new purposes wow. for yourself. Love that. So your connection with Allah is good. I'm not saying become uh, 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 what your fart yeah. is your fart, mm-hmm. but your ta'alluq. Yes. Have a relationship with Allah. And that will take you from strength to strength. One day when we have another show or when, or when we're having a coffee yeah, or whatever, yeah. I'll share with you some experiences. I mean, everybody has got experiences mm-hmm. to share, life experiences over a period of, over a span of 20 years. And Alhamdulillah, with the Qudrat of Allah, every year has been dynamic. It's been different. And may it continue to be. Like inshallah, inshallah. 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 The second piece of advice is you choose happiness. Happiness is not found. Happiness is experience. This, what we're doing now, we're sharing in the show, this is happiness. We're not, I, I didn't come saying, I, uh, uh, I need Mo to make me happy for today to be on his show. I already woke up this morning happy. No matter what I was going through in life, I woke up happy. I said, I'm a happy person and I'm going to make every experience that I go through today happy. So if you're studying, tell yourself, I'm happy studying because I see the bigger picture. Because the minute you start telling yourself in, and you're negative and you start telling yourself, oh, this is a problem. How am I going to solve? Don't look. Don't, uh, and I think I'm going to come to the last thing. Don't look for uh, problems in solutions. Look for solutions to problems. Wow. Wow. Sometimes there's so many times in life. There's so many times in life, every time, your father, let's talk about a father-child or parent-child relationship. The parent is giving the child solutions, or or the the child is giving the parent solutions. Say, the parent asks the child, what's your problem? Mm. How can I solve it? So now the child is now unpacking. Yes. Right. A, B, C, D, E. And the father says, no, I can't do this. The mother says, no, that can't happen. No, this can't. Don't look for problems in solutions. Look for solutions to problems. Uh, that's such great piece of mm. advice. Connect with Allah. Um, don't look for problems. Find the solutions Find in the those solution. problems. Find the solutions. And the one was well, happiness, no, happiness. Matter <laughs> what. no matter <laughs> what. No matter what. That's it. I was waiting for that happiness. smile to come out happiness. before you did. Happiness. This has no been such what. a happy show. And thank you so much for everything. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep the... The, the viewer happy, no matter what you're going through in life, personal issues, business issues, family issues, problem, you choose your own happiness. Uh, I love it. I just had a show uh, last week with Molana Baum on happiness and he gave us some such amazing practical advice on how to be happy. And your, your advice connects up so wonderfully with that because we're all searching for it. And Mohammed, I really want to acknowledge you for everything that you're doing. And I'll take you from strength to strength. Alhamdulillah. And Jazakallah for having me on the show. It's been an amazing experience. Right. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take you the team at Hilal and all our viewers from strength to strength. Inshallah. Thank you so much, Mohammed. I hope the viewers are smiling. I hope the viewers are happy. It's been an epic show. It's been inspirational. It's been motivational. And in the words of Nelson Mandela, education is a weapon that can be used to change the world. So find your education. Use it to change the world. Find it within you to become the best version of yourself. This is motivation. And let me motivate you.